every day we're forced uh, with trials and tribulations, and uh, we're required to make some uh, uh, off-the-cuff decisions. But the, things like that is what molds us and molds our character. And that's what the Character Coalition is about. If you would, let me just share a little thing that uh, someone sent to me. It was a classmate of blah, 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 so many years ago. <laughs> um, a famous writer was in his study, and he picked up his pen and began to write. <clears throat> Last year, my gallbladder was removed. I was stuck in bed due to this surgery for a long time. The same year I reached the age of 60 and had to give up my favorite job. I had spent 30 years of my life with this publishing company. The same year, I experienced the death of my father. In the same year, my son failed in his medical exam because he had a car accident. He had to stay in the hospital with a cast on his leg for several days. And the destruction of my car was a second loss. He concluded with, it was such a bad year. And then his wise wife walked through and looked at his notes and picked them up and went in the other room and came back. And she gave her perspective. Um, last year, I finally got rid of that gallbladder that had given me many years of pain. I turned 60 with sound health and retired from my job. Now I can utilize my time for however I want to. The same year, my father, at the age of 95, without depending on anyone and without any critical conditions, met his creator. The same year God blessed my son with life. My car was destroyed, but my son was alive and without permanent uh, disability. This year was an immense blessing, and it passed well. The morale of this little story is, in our daily lives, we must see that it's not happiness that brings us great gratefulness, but gratefulness that brings us happiness. There's always, always something to be grateful about. Attitude is the one thing over which we can have control in every circumstance. Um, this is a bittersweet time for the Character Coalition. This is our last breakfast. We will be dis disbanding after uh, the breakfast. We have been in um, existence since 2000. And um, we've given away many, many scholarships. We've, be, uh, we've done some uh, forums on bullying and social media, uh, the dangers of social media. We've, had, uh, we've pushed character in the schools and everything. But there are other organizations that are kind of picking up the baton and carrying it forward. And now that we've got a good kickstart, we, we, we don't, need, we don't need to be here anymore. But um, we have enjoyed it. It's uh, been an adventure. And I appreciate all the board members that have helped to serve in this. And um, with that, I'm going to uh, go ahead with the program. But um, thank you for all of our sponsors throughout the uh, years that have helped us with our golf tournament with our, um, we had a calendar uh, that we distributed 3,000 copies each and every year with the character trait on it, and it was seen in most of the, the classrooms. But um, thank you for all your support and for all of our sponsors' support. Uh, now with that, I will call upon Stephen Lambert with Wells, Wellstar to lead us in our prayer and our pledge. Good morning. 
Would you please stand as we say our invocation this morning, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Would you bow in prayer with me, please? Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the good things that we enjoy in our lives, and we thank you for this great day that you've given us. We thank you for the friends that are here with us today as we share in fellowship and food. As you have made us stewards of your creation, help us to strive to make things better than we find them. As we think only of the best, work only for the best and expect only the best in our lives. Help us to make our community the best place for our youth to develop their talents and become good citizens in this community. We thank you for the efforts of the Character Coalition when we pray your blessings upon the uh, future. And we just ask for your direction in this community. Be with the food that was provided for us. We ask that you would bless it to our bodies and bless those that made it for us. Be with our time here today. We ask for your safety and for your blessing. We pray in thy name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You can be seated. One isn't necessarily born with courage, but one is born with potential. Without courage, we cannot practice any other virtue with consistency. We can't be kind, true, merciful, generous, or honest. Courage is the most important of all the virtues because without courage, you can't practice any other virtue consistently. You can practice any virtue erratically, but nothing consistently without courage. So let us begin anew, remembering on both sides that civility is not a sign of weakness and sincerity is always subject to proof. Let us never negotiate out of fear, but let us never fear to negotiate. Let us explore what problems unite us instead of belaboring those problems which divide us. Let us seek to invoke the wonders of science instead of its terrors. Together, let us explore the stars, conquer the deserts, eradicate disease, tap the ocean depths, and encourage the arts and commerce. Let us unite to heed in all corners of the earth the command of Isaiah to undo the heavy burdens and let the oppressed go free. And if a beachhead of cooperation may push back the jungle of suspicion, let us join in creating a new endeavor, not a new balance of power, but a new world of law, where the strong are just and the weak secure and the peace preserved. But let us begin. In our hands, we'll my fellow Indians will rest the final success or failure of our generation. Since this country was founded, each generation has been summoned to give testimony to its greatness. I do not shrink from responsibility. I welcome it. I do not believe any one of us would exchange places with any other person or any other generation. The energy, the faith, the devotion which we bring to this endeavor will light our country and all who serve it, and the glow from that fire can surely light the world. Now the trumpet summons us again, not as a call to bear arms, though arms we need, not as a call to battle, though embattled we are, but a call to bear the burden of a long twilight struggle, year in and year out, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, a struggle against the common enemies of man, tyranny, poverty, disease, and war itself. With a good conscience, our only sure reward, with history, the final judge of our deeds, let us go forth to lead the land we love, asking his blessing and his help, but knowing that here on earth, God's work must truly be our own.
Good morning. It's a, a blessing and an honor to be able to introduce this year's speaker for our Character Coalition breakfast. I got to know Big Al. That's what we call him. Um, I know he's a tiny guy, um, but we like to call him Big Al. I got to know him uh, literally less than a year ago. He came and spoke at our Fields of Faith event for the Fellowship of Christian Athletes at Douglas County. Some of you guys here in attendance got to hear Big Al. Um, I could keep going on and on. He's crazy dynamic. He's got an anointing that's um, very special, a gift that's very special. And I'm gonna just read straight from his bio and then Big Al come up and deliver the message. Algernon Tennyson, founder and president of Awaken International, is a dynamic and passionate speaker with a heart for today's young people. His unique speaking style captures the full attention of any audience while imparting spiritual wisdoms on many issues facing our society today. From local colleges, youth conferences, camps, national organizations, and universities, he has spoken nationwide for over 20 years, successfully reaching across all racial and cultural diversities. Character success will be the topic of his speech and how important it is to have great character and integrity as we strive for our dreams. In addition to reaches nationwide, Algernon continues to travel internationally, leading trips that equip and teach young adults how to engage their culture, all while impacting their communities in the most positive ways they can. Most recently, he has become engaged in a fight against human trafficking and remains committed to fighting this epidemic. Born and raised in Georgia, Algernon currently lives outside of Atlanta. And uh, with that being said, let's give it up for Big Al. Good morning. How are we? It is an honor, a privilege. Um, Ms. Guider and Dutch, thank you guys for allowing me to be here this last coalition um, breakfast. Um, I'm honored, but more than anything, I'm here for the young people. And um, I have a heart for young people. And as we talk about character success, and the reason why I want to talk about that, because sometimes we can get lost in the American dream and lose the fact that the greatest success is your character. And so, uh, and so I want to tackle that issue. I have a, the, uh, God has been gracious to me to have allowed me to work with athletes and college level and professional level and governors and, and, and do some counseling for people who are running for presidents and all these things. There's probably not many of them I haven't given some counsel to. And so all that's wonderful and great, but it means nothing if your character is not solid. So someone asked me, what is the definition of character success? And this is how I put it, because I came up with this word, okay? It's reaching your goals in life without leaving a path of destruction behind you. It's growing and maintaining your character as much as your education and your wealth. A lot of people have the wealth, but they have no character. And so I want to teach you that, yes, get educated, achieve, and do all you can, young people. But don't leave a path of destruction on your way. Encourage people as you go. To me, my greatest success is helping others achieve. I, that's, that's the greatest success. It isn't that I'll make all the money, have all the, it doesn't matter if along my path of success, I'm just damaging people the whole way as I climb the corporate ladder. No one cares how much success you have if you're a jerk. <laughs> Let's just be honest. Nobody cares if you've made a gazillion dollars, but you have no character. I have a, a, the honor this past year, I've never met a single billionaire. I met three this past year that called upon me to do some, some personal one-on-one -on -one counseling with them. And as one gentleman's getting toward the end of his life, young people, and I'm getting ahead of myself, but you got to hear this, I asked him, because he, he's, he's in his late 80s, I said, what would you have done more about in your life? I said, come on, what do you wish you would have achieved more? And the thing he said, he didn't say, I wish I'd have made more billions. What he said to me, and he said, I wish I'd have loved more. 
He said, I wish I'd have told my wife I loved her more. I wish I'd have cut that business trip short to go see my boy play soccer. Make billions. He's the epitome of the American dream. He didn't once mention a single dollar as he's nearing on his deathbed. He didn't say to me, man, I sure wish I'd have made a lot more Benjamins. Sure, I wish I could have been flipping them. No, it was all about people. So all of you here today, if you don't remember anything I'm going to say in these next 20 minutes, remember this. Stuff can be replaced, but people are irreplaceable. I can get some more stuff, but I can't get another you, young person. I can get some more stuff. People don't realize that even this iPhone right now, this will be a relic in about 10, 20 years, and y'all have kids, they're going to be laughing at this little ghetto phone you call iPhone 6. <laughs> Right, adults? So they think this is awesome right now. 20, 30 years from now, your kids aren't going to believe they even let you use something this horrible. <laughs> Stuff will be replaced. People will always hold their value. That's character success. That's character success. Listen to one of my favorite quotes, and then I'll tell you who, who said this. He goes, the function of education is to teach one to think intensively and to think critically. Intelligence plus character, that is the goal of true education. That is, let me say that part again, he goes, intelligence plus character. Now that is the goal of true education. That was said by Martin Luther King Jr. You live in Atlanta and you don't know who he is, then you need some help. <laughs> he said, that is the mark of true success in education is character, not just intelligence, but character within that. How's character defined? Character is defined as the way you think about something, the way you feel about something, and the way you behave. It's how you think, feel, and behave. That defines you. They often say your character shows your true colors, and that's who you are. Meaning, if you want to know who you are, you don't, you don't ask yourself who am I, you ask others, who am I? I said to my own staff every week, I said, am I a good leader? No one's going to get fired, no one has to be on eggshell. Am I a good leader? Where have I failed you guys? Teach me because I'm only as successful as, I, as you guys are successful. My leadership determines my success. It doesn't matter if I'm getting all the accolades and I'm traveling all over the world, but you guys are doing the real work back in the office. You're doing that groundwork for me. So I'm, every week I'm letting them know, so look, I'm only successful if I think you guys are. If y'all are unhappy, it doesn't matter how many TV shows and interviews, it doesn't matter if the people who invest in me the most don't think I'm a good person. So I'll ask them, am I a good leader? And I want them to tell me, how have I failed you? Because I want to change that. How have I failed you? How can I better serve you to make you a better person? So you young people strive in life. As you strive in life, remember, success isn't just based on monetary things, but it's, it's, it's on how you have, have mended in people's hearts and their souls and their spirits and how you've cultivated that because character is what you value the most. And like I said before, stuff can be replaced, people irreplaceable. If you don't value people, anything you don't value, you don't mind crushing it. Anything that you don't value, it, it, it doesn't matter anything to you. So you don't matter if you crush it, hurt it, stump on it, but if you, whatever you value, it's held as precious to you. It's precious to you. I have two beautiful little boys that I've adopted. I have me this cute little African-American baby. He's three, he's got just cute chocolate deliciousness. And then I've adopted me this little powder, cute little white baby. I love my sons. And because I love my sons, I'm not going to let them walk out on Interstate 75. Well, y'all go on, sweeties. Go have some fun on the interstate. No, that's insensitive. But because I love them, I would step in front of a car for them. I would gladly, gladly give up anything I could for them. We have been recently been told that my second son I've adopted, that he may be blind and deaf. And I, I hope and pray that someday he gets to a certain age and they develop new medical procedures. And I hope, Dutch, they say, he just needs some donor eyes. And I would be insulted if they didn't ask me for my eyes first. He could have my eyes, my kidneys, my lungs, my heart. 
I'd kiss my bride and say, honey, it's been a good life. I've seen enough, but my boy's gonna see. And if he needs a heart, I hope mine qualifies first. What else does he need? Take it, take it. Because when you value something, you give your all for it. So value character above all. Value character. I would rather have less if it meant I did it the right way. Do y'all hear me? I'd rather have less stuff and less material stuff and less money if it meant I didn't have to crush a bunch of innocent people along the way. I'd rather do it less if I could protect your heart and your spirit and treat you like you are the most valuable thing on this planet as human beings. That's success, young people. No matter what, whatever your American dream may be, whatever you're aiming for, that's wonderful. But to me, successful people are those who honor and value people. Honor and value people. There's no greater success, there's no greater character than that. Let that be the thing that define us. We're educating our young people fine. We're just not teaching them very much about their character and values. They may end up going to Ivy League and getting a great job somewhere and making a ton of bank. They're just not good people. They're educated and they're gonna make a lot of money. There's just not anyone that we wanna be in the same room with. And so I'm saying, let's do both. Let's educate you, but let's also educate you and grow you in your character so that you can have both. You can have financial success, but you can have character success and you can thrive in both. That's what our country needs more than anything. There's a ton of people out there with well, there's just a ton of people out there with character success. And that's what we want to leave you with. That's the whole point of this breakfast, is saying this, these are words for those of you who've shown some character also. Wasn't that you were just hardworking and gifted? They wouldn't have given you any scholarships if you were the, the rudest kid in school. You don't listen to teachers, you disobey your parents, you don't like anybody, nobody's giving you a scholarship. Obviously, you had some character. People saw that in you. There was some character to mean the way you believed and treated people and talked and that. It was, it was becoming a, something that we admired. We admired that behavior. We're like, man, that's beautiful. Not only is this young person striving, they're fighting hard, but look at how they respect their peers. Listen how they obey their teachers. Listen how they treat authority. We admire that. I want to throw my wallet at a kid like that. I do. Parents, y'all know how great it is when you just have your kids say thank you? You want to give them everything. When they just say thank you, I'm like, here son, you can have everything. Here, here. Here's, you're three years old, but you can have daddy's wallet, my car keys, here we go. Because most of the time he's like, it's mine. It's mine. I'm like, you're three, son. You don't have a job. Those Hot Wheels are daddy's Hot Wheels. Can you say brokey broke? You're brokey broke. Daddy's got money, you're broke. So when he says thank you, it makes me want to give that kid the world with a, just, a simple thank you, daddy. So that gratitude makes you, we just tend to want to bless people who have a thankful heart. That kid is like, well, give me that anyway. You're like, mm. but that one who's thankful, you're like, yeah, I want to do something else for that person. Because they just show a little character and a little gratitude about something. Remember, remember this, he goes, if you don't um, have a paradigm or a way of looking at things, your character hel it helps you at looking at life a certain way. That's how you shape everything. If you don't learn to have this value where you value people, then maybe you'll chase education and things, but like I said, you'll still sell yourself short. What's America craving more than anything right now? We want people of character. We've seen people with wealth and greed and all that. We just want to know there are people still with character and integrity. <laughs> it's, it's, it's everybody seeking for it. I don't care what your race, I don't care what your political, we're all just seeking someone of character. Show us that you care about us, just a little. Show me that you care about me a little. We all want that. May your generation begin to redefine that. Maybe my generation has failed you guys in some of that. I think we got so caught up in, in chasing stuff that in the, in, the, in the midst, we hurt a lot of people and we just kind of lost our character because we wanted that American dream. We want that success, that wealth, that power. We want that power. 
I'm chasing that stuff, not so I can better other people's life, but because I want people to notice me, how awesome I am. I'm the CEO of this company. I'm the head of this. I'm the police chief of this. I'm the fire chief of this. I'm the head of the school. We, we weren't chasing it to better people. My generation started chasing it because we liked that power and that ego. It made us feel good. And I pray that your generation will still strive for those things, but so that you can help others get there. I want you to strive for success. Achieve everything you can, but do it because you want to better people while you're bettering yourself. Do it because you want to better people while you better yourself. There's a famous scripture that says, what you sow, you reap. I want to sow the right seed into people's lives. I do. There's another passage, and I'm only going to use this in Romans 13 8, It says, owe no man anything except to love. I want my only debt, and young people, I, I pray the same for you, your only debt be is one you can never pay for the rest of your life. You just keep loving and encouraging people. Let that be a debt none of us can ever fully pay. For the rest of my life, may my, my sole purpose in life be to love and encourage others until I breathe my last. They so say, when are you going to stop? When I stop breathing. Well, yeah, so long as I'm breathing, I'm looking for people I can encourage. I'm looking for people I can love. I'm looking for people I can give hope and get out of that despair. I'm looking for someone in class, who that kid who's always sitting at lunch by themselves. You sit at home over there and go, nobody ever sits with them. Let me go sit with them. I'm not going to join this group of people who are ridiculing people and cutting jokes on people about their appearance or their economic standing. I'm actually going to go ahead and encourage them. And I'm, I'm going to go against the flow. We're giving you guys permission to rebel. Rebel. When everybody else is doing wrong, I want you to rebel because that's nothing new. You're doing what everybody else is doing. We're going to give you permission to rebel today. Where everybody else is doing wrong, we're going to tell you to walk in character. Where about us over here bashing people with their words? Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never. That is the biggest lie ever told. Trust me, y'all don't see it because you're young people. Some of us were old enough to be your parents and grandparents. We still feel some words that were said to us. Even at our age, we can remember. I don't remember every kid that pushed me down in kindergarten. But I can remember teachers from as, as early on as third and fourth grade saying things to me. I can remember coaches and people saying words. I don't remember every fight, every argument, but I can remember words people said to me to this day at 43, and some of them were still sting today. Words that impacted my young, impressionable mind, especially as a teenager. Words that impacted me because people chose not to walk in character. And them words stung and set me back because I was faking it to everyone. They thought because I was basketball star, I didn't feel anything. But I'd go home and weep because somebody said, you're going to be a loser. You're going to end up selling drugs. You're a nobody. You, you come from the wrong side of the track. You're poor. You're this and this. And I, I wouldn't let them see the hurt in school, but I'd be thinking about it all day. Man, did they really mean that? That teacher really meant I'm a loser? I mean, am I really? Words. See, that was a lack of character. But the people who encouraged me the most were ones who pulled me aside. It'd be teachers, administrators, hey, 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 hey. Where you grow up doesn't dictate who you will become. You're, you're greater than this. I'll never forget certain principals saying, you're greater than this. I know your mom only has a sixth grade education and your brother's in prison and no one in your family's ever even graduated high school and I had a principal say, but I see greatness in you. You're gonna do some great things. And just that one person pouring some positivity into me made me believe, I said, wait, maybe. Maybe I can be different. Maybe I, maybe I can accomplish something. And I have. But would I have done it without people pouring into me? Probably not. Probably not. So I want every adult in here to hear. What we say and what we do impacts others. And this isn't just a challenge for the young people. This is a challenge for us adults to have some character success. Stuff can be replaced, but you can't replace that person sitting on your right and your left. They're valuable. They're more valuable than any paycheck you'll ever get. They're more valuable than any plaque you'll ever get. They're more valuable than anything else you'll ever do in your life. Nothing's more valuable than that person sitting to your right or your left. And if we don't learn to value each other above, above all else, then we'll chase those other things more than we chase encouraging each other. We'll chase the money and the power and the, and the, and the degrees more than we'll chase building people's hearts and spirits. So, so my challenge for all of us as I close, it's to set an example for our young people. 
Not just tell them, do as I say, but let them say, do as I do. Let's show them. Let's show them some examples to follow. We tend to follow what we see more than what we hear. I'm going to say that again, y'all. We tend to follow what we see a lot better than what we hear. It's one thing for somebody to tell me have character, treat people well, and love people, and then I turn around and see them blasting people. Then I'm going, you're a hypocrite, and I'm, I'm, forget it. I'm going to do exactly what you do. But when they turn around and see me, then they don't have an excuse to say, well, you, you're just speaking, you're double-minded, man. They can see me saying, look, do this, but I'm trying my best to set an example for them. I want my boys to see that. I don't want them to hear daddy just preaching to them. I want to be able to show them as I love the neighbors, as we help the homeless and, and help the sick and, and those who are less fortunate than my kids are because they're getting a great life living in, with us. But not everybody's that fortunate and blessed. And I want my kids to see that daddy doesn't look down on them. He's out trying to help those people because he was once there too. He was once that person who needed help. So have some character success, young people and value people above all else. Remember that there's nothing greater than people. So I close with this. Work hard, never surrender, never give up, endure through adversity, cause it's coming. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when it comes. There's not a person in this room who's accomplished anything of value that didn't go through some type of adversity. We all did. So don't think as if adversity is like a curse on you, like, what's wrong? Life isn't perfect. It's not perfect for most of us. It's not. My mother-in-law died of breast cancer when she was told she had a 97% chance of surviving. She was my wife's hero. Life's not fair. Was that a tough time? Yes. But we had to keep going. I've seen good people get sick, good people lose jobs. It just happens. But how do we get over it? We endure. We fight, we don't, that is the American way. We don't give up. We are never TKO'd as Americans, never. No, I, I, that, don't ring, don't sound that bell. He's getting up like Rocky, because that's what we do. We fight, we fight. We don't expect handouts, we fight in this country. We fight for what we want. You fight and don't you ever not believe in who you are. You were created and born with purpose. Everyone in this room, especially you young people, you're not an accident, you're not a mistake, you are purposely created. And there's nothing you can't accomplish, no greatness you can't accomplish. The road may not be easy, but a lot of times you enjoy stuff when you've had to earn, when you've earned it a little bit. When your parents finally stop paying for everything, you gotta pay the car note. You take better care of that car. Come on, am I telling the truth? When they finally say, look, it's on you now. Now all of a sudden you start taking care of your clothes better because dad promised you he ain't gonna buy no more. So sometimes when you finally have to give something to see it, it makes you appreciate it more. When you've had to work for it and it wasn't just given to you, you earned it, you worked for it. You appreciate it when you get it, you savor it more. Because you realize this didn't come overnight. A lot of us adults can testify to that. Our success didn't come overnight and it wasn't easy. But once we got there, we appreciated it. And we appreciated the people around us too. We're like, oh man, I know what it's like to be there. I was there, but now I'm here. But I'm grateful because this didn't come easy. And I'm not promising any of you an easy road. But I can promise you one filled with success if you will endure till the end. Thank you for having me. If you don't remember anything else, Remember, stuff can be replaced. People, irreplaceable. That will give you some character success and you will do well in life no matter where you end up. Whatever your goals are will be wonderful goals if you keep your character intact. May the Lord bless you and thank you guys so much for having me on your last Coalition Breakfast. God bless you. So much wisdom in that from an individual who you can tell has experienced a lot in his life. My name is Brian Fortner. I am your DA. I'm also a member of the Community Character Coalition. 
Every year, the most important thing that we do here at the Community Character Coalition is we get the opportunity to honor some of our students who are living examples of these words that we talk about every month. They've not only achieved academic excellence, but they've shown excellence in their character and their service to their community as well. It's always hard to narrow them down. We have so many worthy students here in Douglas County that we couldn't begin to give every one of them what they deserve. But these are some of the standouts. Martin Luther King also said, education without morals is like a ship without a compass, going nowhere, wandering aimlessly. Well, these students' compasses are dialed in and their ships sail true. And we should be proud and reassured that our future is in their hands. And we're going to begin, I'm just going to go alphabetically by the schools. We're going to name these students, tell you just a little bit about them, and a teacher that influenced each one of them. As you know from the past, we have a scholarship that we're going to give them just as a token of our appreciation and recognition of the character that they have exhibited in their lives. We're going to begin with Miss Amelia Cole. If you'll come up, Miss Cole, along with your teacher, Mr. Andy Daniel. Amelia is from Alexander High School. She has a GPA of 3.96. She has plans to attend Samford University, majoring in physical therapy with an emphasis in prosthetics. One of her senior superlatives was she was mo voted most likely to succeed. We couldn't list all of the accomplishments of all of these students. We would need pages and pages, so we're just going to hit some of the highlights. She was an honor band. She was a nominee for the Georgia Governor's Honors Program in Chemistry. She's been in Beta Club for four years, National Honor Society for three years, and her positive impact teacher is Mr. Andy Daniel. So I want to present this scholarship on behalf of the Community Character Coalition to Amelia Cole. Congratulations. We also have a, you want to do one more? We have to follow directions well. That's another key to character. <laughs> also, we have a small token for the impact teacher and the important role that they play in these students' lives. And it's just a little something, hopefully, to help them out um, in the classroom, maybe help them with some supplies. We appreciate you. And your Our next student is Miss Emily Austin from Chapel Hill High School. Come on up, Emily. She has a GPA of 4.0. She's attending University of North Carolina, uh, Tar Heels in the Final Four. Everybody knows that, I guess. Major in Spanish, pre-medical studies, and biology. She was a 2015 and 16 Page Foundation Star student, an AP Scholar with Honor Awards, a Georgia National Merit Scholar, loves volleyball and swimming and her positive impact teacher is Miss Christ Kristen Johnson who I believe teaches AP microeconomics is that correct <laughs> on behalf of the community character coalition Emily wanted to present you with this scholarship and tell you thank you for your leadership Our next student from Douglas County High School is Violetta Hernandez Padilla. She too has a GPA of 4.0. Come on up. She has plans to attend the University of California with a major in electrical engineering and computer science. She's been in Beta Club for four years, an AP Scholar with Honors, Hispanic Heritage Gold Award recipient, and DC Governor's Honors Program winner. Her positive impact teacher is Dr. Anita Johnson, who teaches chemistry. On behalf of the Community Character Coalition, and now the fellas show up. Our next recipient is Vincent Buckman from Lithia Springs High School. Come on up, Vincent. He has a GPA of 3.84. He has plans to attend Washington and Lee University with a major in biological sciences. 
He's Accelerated Pre-Calculus Student of the Year, AP Environmental Science Student of the Year, AP English Language Student of the Year, host of Medical Terminology uh, Region winner, National Honor Society member, and his positive impact teacher is Mr. Keenan Lee, who teaches AP Calculus, I believe. On behalf of the community Taller than me, I don't know about that. <laughs> this is for you. Appreciate your service. <laughs> and our final recipient is from New Manchester High School. Come on up, Jemiah Jackson. Jemiah has a GPA of 3.79. She has plans to attend the University of Georgia this fall, majoring in pre-pharmacy. She has a pharmacy tech certified license from West Georgia Tech in 2015, all A, B honor roll in 2014 and 15, all A honor roll in 2012 and 2014, a superintendent scholar in 2012, loves dancing and volleyball, and her positive impact teacher is Miss Rogers, who teaches anatomy. If you need hope, which so many of us need these days, I submit to you that you need look no further than right here, because here it is. We're in good hands. Join me in saying thank you to all of our recipients. They're truly why we do what we do. You want to do a group photo? And before I step down, I do we want to mention and encourage everybody to step over to the side. Big Al uh, has a table over here and tell you a little bit about some of the things that he has going on. So please stop by and uh, speak with him about that. Thank you so much. No, Ann, I'm not on the program. <laughs> and you all, you all may, may take your seats if you would like to do that, but uh, I have been asked to do a really fun thing today, and I tell you, I'm not going to take a whole lot more of your time, and for a former politician who loves the microphone, you can believe that or not, but I promise you, I promise you I'm not going to take a lot of time. 1999 in the spring, Ralph and Suzanne Hudgens at the time were fellow state reps. Ralph was a state rep. And he came to me on the floor of the house and said, Bob, you and Paula need to go with Suzanne and me up to Indianapolis to the mayor's conference of character cities. And I said, OK, Ralph, tell me about it. By the way, Ralph is now the uh, insurance and fire commissioner in the state of Georgia. We went to Indianapolis, and I was blown away with inspiration about the character movement. And I came home with a seed planted in my brain to say, how would this work in little old Douglas County, Georgia? But in that same spring of 1999, I just invited some community leaders down at the time to Parkway Hospital, you know where Home Depot is now. Uh, Parkway bought the breakfast, and we had a gathering of political leaders, public safety leaders, education leaders, and I just laid out the vision for the character movement, and there was a buzz in that room for 30 minutes after the program. The, the, now the state attorney general of the state of Oklahoma spoke, the mayor of uh, McDonough spoke, and there was such a buzz in the room, people came up and said, Bob, we need to do this in the county. And so it was my privilege over the next year to start laying in place the Community Character Coalition because, as you in this room know, that was the right thing to do. 
We did it with the support of the political community, with the education community, with the public safety community. We formed a board and we had the Community Character Coalition and you saw the current board members, they were on the screen a few minutes ago and I, I appreciate you folks that you've carried the mantle of the movement. But there's one particular fella's name that I need to mention that most of you in the room probably don't know, but his name is Bill Linder. Bill spoke up at one of our meetings and said, Bob, you know, one of the things we need to do as a, as a community character coalition is give away scholarships to reward students who are students of character in the schools. And that's how that began. So, a little bit of history, 2009, church and professional and family commitments forced me to move away from the Community Character Coalition Board. But now, Ann Guider, would you please come to the stage? In that same 2009, Ann stepped up to the plate and said, we're not gonna let this movement die. And she came forward and from 2009 until this moment, she continued the movement and it is my honor, and I was kind of surprised by this this morning, but Barbara Caldwell said, Bob, will you do this for us? And I said, man, I just can't wait to do this for you. Um, it's a small token of appreciation, but the gift and the flowers come from the board of the Community Character Coalition, and I know that, as a small token of appreciation to Anne for carrying that mantle for the last eight years keeping the breakfast going, keeping the scholarships going and whatever. And so this is for you, Ann, but I think it is also fair to say that as a thank you from me personally, although I had nothing to do with the decision, it is a thank you from the public safety community, it is a thank you from the political community, it is a thank you from the, from, from the church and the religious community, it is a thank you from the education community for carrying this mantle and caring enough about the issue of character to bring this movement forward. So as the Community Character Coalition disbands as of this breakfast today, and all I can say is thank you Thank you, thank you. Let's give her a resounding round of applause. Y'all are very kind, um, but you can't do anything without a team, and we had a great team with the uh, character board and uh, the support of the community, which is uh, a real biggie. So um, it was my pr privilege to serve, but uh, I just need to step down. And, and so we're, we're disbanding, but there are so many other organizations that have stepped up to the plate. We even have Upward Ball, you know. Uh, we have the uh, FCA. We have so many other organizations that are uh, just coming out of the woodwork, the churches are getting very involved in the in the character teaching and in, in the school system. So, uh, like I said, we kick started it, but y'all y'all can take it from here. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. With that said, y'all are dismissed, and I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.